Well, howdy. I'm Tommy. And I'm Patty. And we are Alderman, Alderman Farms. Farms. Welcome back to our next installment of Sustainable Saturdays, where we're going to talk about all things sustainability. <laughs> Today, what are we talking about? We're talking about sustainable gardening. Um, and before we get started in that, do you want to kind of talk about what we consider sustainable or exactly what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah that, that's a very good thing. We probably need to do that every time we start. For those of you who haven't seen the previous episodes, um, the, the term sustainability. Well, I think that to be 100% sustainable in any endeavor, <clears throat> the definition we're using is zero outside inputs, meaning that whatever endeavor you're undertaking, you can do it in perpetuity from now to the Lord returns without any outside inputs. And we said in the very first week in the introductory video that in most endeavors, 100% sustainability is probably not achievable mm -hmm. in, in today's life. And, and there's some areas that you may be able to be fully sustainable that we can't. It and vice versa. Yeah. There, so, last week we talked about sustainable water. Right. And Patty made the point that while overall 100% sustainability may not be possible, we feel like 100% sustainability with water is achievable for us. Yeah, that's something that's but achievable. We've got creeks and springs that you may not have depending on where you live. Mm -hmm. So that's the definition. We're, we're to be a, our goal at Alderman Farms and your goal should be to be as sustainable as possible mm -hmm. uh, in, in your life. So uh, the fewer the outside inputs, the more sustainable you are. That's right. So we're talking about sustainable gardening. And I wanted to read to you my notes. You know, I've been making notes about what to talk about and stuff like that. And I wrote this down quite a few weeks ago. And I wrote down, not that much will change for us with sustainable gardening. We don't need electricity. We don't need gas. We don't till our garden. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. In filming this video and talking about things, I have realized a lot would change for us. Hmm. A lot would change for us. Um, with the way uh, we are right now, we're in the process of changing over to having more compost um, in, our, in, in different areas that we're planting in and everything. Because here down in the south, we have a huge weed problem. Um, compost or mulch? Mulch, sorry. Yes, mulch. I am making compost too, but mulch we want to keep uh, in our rows, in our walkways, to keep down the grass. We haven't attained that yet. We're in the process of converting over. Um, did you want to say something? No, I was just oh. like, whoo, we haven't attained it. In fact, yeah. we didn't video, we didn't, we don't have any video of this uh, for this video, but I can't, what did I tell you when I rolled up the sides of the high tunnel today? You're talking about how much grass oh is in there? Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, it, Even in the high tunnel, because you see we're keeping it warm in there by keeping the sides down, therefore the grass is continuing to grow, just like the other fruits, the vegetables that are in there are continuing to grow, so is the grass. So it's a never-ending process. Um, so for us to be more sustainable, we are doing a no-dig, no-till, excuse me, a no-till gardening. Uh, inside the high tunnel, that means we do not till up the rows. We put them into rows one time, and we don't we don't continue to till it. Um, that is our goal for outside the high tunnel. Also, we did put uh, we do have some rows, though you can't hardly see them because of the grass um, over there. And what we're working on is getting our mulch in there, and we also have some mulch beds that are around some of our fruit trees that we've planted that I will plant in this year. And honestly, before spring, uh, honestly, and I would like it today, but it's not going to happen today. I would like to go ahead and get um, the areas uh, weeded down and covered in mulch. Um, I've look at, look at the, let's show them. Uh, in fact, look right here. This is one of those bed areas around our fruit trees. And Patty was talking about the, how the mulch holds the grass down. Well, here, here she's going to show you. You know, right outside the mulch bed, we've got grass growing freely. Yeah, and, and as you dig down, you can see the moisture that the mulch holds in there 
plus the weed suppression. Yeah, because it blocks out the sunlight. Yeah, I mean, it's right next to the grass, and there's no weeds growing under the mulch. So that's my goal. Um, but anyway, so that's one thing that we are doing. Now, is that sustainable? Well, we have a chipper shredder yeah. that takes gasoline that we absolutely love. It actually will shred our leaves for us, and it will shred sticks in all for us, too, to make mulch. We also have something else right now that, that won't last forever, but we have, it's going to last for a while. What? It's on the power line. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> right. We got piles of mulch, and so that's where we're actually, the, the, the huge amounts of mulch that we're putting on the outside of the high tunnel um, that's where we're actually getting that from. The tree company had come through and Tommy ran into them and he asked them if he would, if they, if they wanted to, you know, leave us their mulch. I they didn't could. run into them. I ran them down. Yeah, he did. He went looking for them. But, um, so that's how we're able to do that. And it's free. Um, they're, they're glad to have a place, uh, close to dump it rather than having to drive to wherever they normally dump it. I don't know. Uh, so it's a burden to them. They have yeah. to find somewhere to dump it. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're able to do it in these large amounts. But that's not sustainable. Um, of course, that's off property, getting something from off property. But also with with our chipper shredder, that's not sustainable either. Because if we're talking about no outside input, gas is outside input, and it does take gas. So. What we're doing, we've done, we've built a leaf bin. We're also going to make a bigger leaf bin and uh, make this one a little bit better. But for right now, I have a place that I can pile leaves. And it will compost down also um, and mulch down. And so if we did not have wood chips for these beds that we are establishing, what we would do is after the leaves start breaking down some, we would take them up and put them on top of the bed. So I feel like that's sustainable. I feel like that solves the problem. It helps, uh, it's gonna definitely help with weed suppression. Uh, it will enrich the soil. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like we're good there. Uh, there's another thing that we need is, is fertilizer. And we have our animals and so we have goats. So we can put our manure straight into the garden. And typically what we do <coughs> is we just, uh, whenever we need manure, we go to the barn, there's hay, we rake the hay aside, dig up the manure, because it com it, it press it com uh, compresses down, and so it um, you know we just pull it out like that, and you, we can use goat manure straight into the garden. Why? Yeah, I was going to get you to expand on that briefly. We don't want we don't want to be on too long, but. Uh, people may not understand what you mean by you can put goat poop straight on the garden. Well, different manure, and I, I really don't know the, the technical uh, term. Yeah, margin. everything to say about it, but I know horse manure, cow manure, that's hot, and chicken manure, that's hot manures. That means that if you use it straight in your garden, it will burn your plants. Rabbit poop and goat poop will not burn your plants. Um, now, what I guess about, if. Do you know about pig? Oh, yeah, pig would be too hot. Pig is hot? Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, but honestly, I don't usually put my manure on top of the ground. In my planting hole or up under my seeds is where I put my manure anyway. But you still would not want to put the more hot manures like that. You would want to have, they would need to compost down and to where they wouldn't be hot. And when I say hot, I really mean hot. Um, it, it, it when it gets mixed with organic matter, it actually gets hot. So um, you would want to avoid that. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see. I need to look at my list. I While guess. you're looking at the list, let mm -hmm. me say something else about the concept of sustainability that that you brought to mind that I wish I would have mentioned, but I didn't. And that is why why worry about sustainability? You can get gas and all that. Well, I want to say we are not Patty and I are not driving towards sustainability just to say that we are um that but the thing is we learned through katrina mm -hmm. when hurricane katrina hit that's right very short span of time 10 days we were out of power and that causes you to think about things gasoline was 
not to be found during you know because everybody bought it all and they couldn't get it in here well and, the li- and they had lines long lines to get gas yeah. and not far from here there was a shooting at a gas station people got in an argument over yeah. gas so yeah. you know who so, wants to do that let me tell you something i'm not against gasoline i'm not against outside input now we like our power tools we love using our tiller um, we love using our weed eater. I, I love using the, the weed whacker to get the weeds out of the house. Oh, that's tunnel. another thing we do. We use the weed eater a lot to keep the, to, for, to suppress the grass. That's why we're hoping by going over to the mulch that we'll help suppress mm-hmm. it and we will have less use of the weed eater. Yeah, because the idea is, what if? <laughs> yeah, you know, what, what if? if? You can't get gas for and, the tiller and the weed eater. And, and honestly... It will make our jobs easier, even if, Mm -hmm. and our mulch will not suppress all of the grass. It won't. It's coming up in my, uh, the beds that we have between the fruit trees. There is stuff still pushing its way up through there, and it's deep, but it will help uh, suppress the weeds, and it will make our job easier. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're not getting any younger. In fact, I had a birthday yesterday, and I'm we, and, and I turned two years shy of sixty. <laughs> um, why don't you just say fifty-eight? Because it just blows my mind that I'm two years away from sixty. It's really hard to believe. It's that. really hard to believe. So, but uh, anyway, our hand tools. We use mostly hand tools. Uh, of course, we do have the chipper shredder and stuff like that. But I'm talking about as far as planting. I use a hoe. Um, I, we use our stirrup hoe. I mentioned the tiller, mm-hmm. and we were talking about being no till. Well, in, like inside the high tunnel, we don't use the tiller. Yeah, we, we, we don't use, use it that. the first time. We use, you know, so anytime we get ready to start, a, it's it's nice to break up the ground when you're first starting mm-hmm. a bed. You don't have you don't to have do that. To. I've not done that under our mulch beds that we have right now. Yeah. So, um, but you know, there are hand tools we're going to need, and that we have. Um, we have a shovel, we have the stirrup hoe, we have a regular hoe. I have a little hand trowel that I use mm-hmm. a lot. I we am got our hoss wheel hoe we, with yeah. several attachments, including, um, it's kind of like a... a stirrup a, hoe, it's got, in there. Yeah, well, that's yeah. right. It does have a big stirrup hoe. We've got harrows on it. We've got discs available for it. But Yeah, so, um, but you know, so we, we feel like we're set up right there. Um but, you know, seeds are, are an issue. You have to have seeds to grow a garden, duh. But I do have a lot of seeds, and I have some seeds that are older that I still use. And what I do when I'm using older seeds, I'll plant three or four seeds rather than just one or two mm. uh, because the fertility of the seed goes down uh, as it gets older. Some seeds last longer than other seeds. But uh, let me throw you a curve. Mm-hmm. Anything you can do to in to prolong that? You can. You can actually store your seeds in the freezer if you have power. If you have power, mm-hmm. true. <laughs> but um, anyway, I don't store my seeds in the freezer. I used to. Uh, I have a lot of seeds now, and I don't do that. Um, but you know, buying seed packs is not sustainable either. Um, so you have to learn how to save seeds. I have to learn how to save seeds. I have been doing that, not because I have to, but because I wanted to. I wanted to learn that. There are different techniques in saving different seeds. Some seeds are very simple. You know, green beans, you just leave them on the vine until they dry or until they're mostly dry and you harvest them, you shell them out, you have seeds. Um... You know, lettuce, I usually have left mine on the stem to get mostly dry, and then you can cut them and put a, put a paper bag over it. Uh, but, you know, there's just there's lots of different techniques into saving seed. When you're talking about tomato and squash, I've saved those seeds before, too. That's a little bit more involved. None of it's hard. None of it that I've done. Um, aren't you going to do? A, uh, aren't you thinking of doing a, a seed saving series on yeah, our this, YouTube channel? This year, I'm going to do a, a seed saving series and uh, just showing the different ways that you save to save seed, um, because it's something important. And I want to instead of keeping on buying seeds every year, which I don't. I, I do have certain seeds I've saved, 
that I am using year after year that are my own stock. But I just think it would be wise if we did that. But that get that opens up a whole new uh, can of worms when you're talking about saving seeds because you want to save pure seeds and you don't want them yeah. cross pollinated. Um, so like. If you grow zucchini squash and yellow squash, the seeds you save from those squash are going to be a mix between a zucchini and a yellow. So you have to isolate the plants. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, that's that's another can of worms to open. But that's something that's very important. To be sustainable, we have to be saving our own seeds. And I've done some, but I have not saved seed from everything we've planted. I've saved corn seed. I've got dandy corn seed that we're going to be planting, hopefully, a big uh, crop of it this year for our cornmeal because I buy my uh, dried corn to make cornmeal with, and so I want to be able to produce my own. Talking about uh, the, the, the plants cross-pollinating, the different kinds of squash and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, we're blessed here because of our geography and the, and the blessings of God, we've got enough property that if we really wanted to, and Patty's even already talking about doing this, we, we've got enough acreage that we could plant some yellow squash here and go far enough away to, to plant another variety of squash without worrying about it cross-pollinating. We would have to protect those, yeah. those remote plants with caging or something to keep the wild animals from getting it. Mm -hmm. You may not be in that situation, but that's where, you know, cooperating in community, you may, you may have a friend that, that lives within walking distance, but far enough away that you could agree and say, hey, you grow the zucchini, I'll grow the yellow and that's save right. the seeds and, and things of that nature. That's exactly right. And one thing I have done is like, um, I've saved, I told you I saved cucumber seeds. Um, the Monica cucumber, I'm really liking it for growing in the high tunnel, um, and I just grew a lot of it. I saved a lot of seeds. So I don't have to save seed every year for right. the Monica cucumber. So, and you can do things like that too. If, and, and you could do things like plant your yellow squash in the spring, and that's the only squash you plant, and plant zucchini more in the fall. And then the next year you can grow them together if you saved enough seed. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways to get around that. And like Tommy said, that's what was I was going to say, is if your neighbor... You know, you could trade off with your neighbor. And there are also um, little screen bags you can put over your blooms to keep the bumblebees is what uh, cross-pollinates the squash and the honeybees. And so if you can protect it and you cross-pollinate, you, you pollinate it yourself by picking them one flower and pollinating the other, then you can have true seed. Haven't done that. Probably won't get into doing that this year, but that's something that I might would try and do down the line mm. to see how that works. There's, there's little bags you can actually buy to put over your bloom. So thinking about a garden, making a garden or make, making gardening as sustainable as possible. We've talked about seeds. You have to you want to be able to eliminate having to, to bring seeds in from outside of your farm. What, what else have we covered? Well, we've covered the tools, and most everybody that gardens should have the tools they need. Mm -hmm. um, we and, talked about fertilizer. Yeah, and doing no-till, because doing no-till, you know, you don't have to have your tiller running. You go out and dig a hole and plant your plant. Right, right. We so, haven't talked about water, have we? We haven't, and water is a bit of an issue for us because... I like to plant most of my garden in the high tunnel. And as you have seen, it doesn't rain in the high tunnel. <laughs> if you're gardening outside, um, if most of your garden or all of your garden is outside, uh, then really the only thing, the only worry you have to have about water sustainability is if it were to be in a drought. That's right. Know, where, and we're not talking about where your garden Again, we don't want to be, we're not gloom and doomers, but we're just talking about what ifs. We're just what ifing stuff. And if you were in a situation where you had to have your garden to live, then maybe you ought to think about some creative ways to have water when it's not, when it doesn't rain enough. But if you're gardening in a high tunnel, it doesn't rain enough ever. Ever. It <laughs> because never rains it doesn't in rain tunnel. in a high tunnel. But I do want to add in, that's another reason for doing the heavy mulch is because it does retain your soil, mo soil moisture. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, the, the high tunnel, the issue with it is water. And we have a plan for the water. 
some of it, the plan is in motion. We have our barrel with a spigot on it already because we uh, used it to water uh, a garden that we had planted out by the road when we did not have water out there. We now have water out there. Um, but Yeah, I loaded Tommy, it up in the tractor. In the tractor, <laughs> and we had a hose hooked to it, and that's how we watered out by the road when it got real dry. Mm -hmm. And it did do that. We only had to do that once or twice. Once. once. Well, one year. Yeah, one year. Once or twice that year, yeah. But um, it worked. And so, in thinking about uh, being sustainable with our water for the high tunnel, we thought about that barrel. Now, it's just one 55-gallon barrel, but we have two. We only have one with a spigot, so we have to convert the other one over to a spigot. So that would give us two 55-gallon barrels. Um, we have to test it. Uh, the water does run off the high tunnel and the little, um, where you've rolled it up, it kind of acts like a little gutter to where you can tell on the ground where water has hit a lot. We think we could place the bucket right there. Of course, we'd want to put some screen and some um, wire over that to just to help keep debris from getting in there. But uh, we think that would be very sustainable. We also have to lift the bucket in the air because, the, yeah, the barrel, where because it would be gravity fed at that point. So it would need to be higher than where, you know, where, where, would, where, where, gravi where gravity would make it flow. Yeah. I don't know what I want to say. So, um, and we could just then attach it into our uh, watering system that's in the high tunnel and water the high tunnel. I don't know how far that would go, um, a 55-gallon barrel. I, I have no idea. I'm curious. I mean, like in the summertime, I water the garden for 15 minutes every day. So, and it's drip irrigation. It's drip irrigation. It's drip tape. So we don't know so, how, much, how much water it takes to fill up every, I don't know how many feet of drip tape we have. You could probably calculate it. You yeah. Know, somebody smarter than me could calculate how much water it takes to fill up the tapes and then drip for 15 minutes. That's two, four, six, eight. We've got eight 50 foot rows, so that's 400 foot. In that, just, some of it just, has double tape, so that's Oh, yeah, that's feet. right. Anyway, so that's something that we need to work on uh, and work towards. Is, is being able to water the high tunnel. It would be nice to have water that we could water the outside too, if it ever needed to be watered. Yeah, and if we were to experience drought conditions, then we just, so we'd have to huff it, just like we talked about in the in last week's video, we'd mm -hmm. be huffing back and forth from the creek. I was thinking about last week's video too, because we talked about that uh, we would want, we want it to get a pond. And if we did get a pond, it wouldn't be that far from the high tunnel. Yeah. So in that case, um, it would be uh, pretty easy for us to haul water up there. Yeah. I mean, I say easy. It'd be easier than hauling it from the well. It's closer than the well. Yeah, and somebody <clears throat> commented on last week's on the uh, water video about installing, building a ram pump mm -hmm. uh, down for the creek um, yeah. to help pump water. You know, it's way too far. But it's a half a mile, by the way. Since oh, we, that's right. It's a half a mile since, to the creek. Since we did that video, we, we tracked ourselves with our Apple Watches uh, going back to the creek. And there's two main ways. You could probably make it a little shorter by blazing a new trail a little straighter, but not much. And we, it's and it's kind of downhill from our house, so um, we've got two. But there's two paths, and both of them are almost exactly 0. 0.5 to mm -hmm. get to get to the creek, uh, 0. 0.5 miles. But anyway, I thought about that ramp pump deal. We might could at least install one, uh, so and pipe it up the steepest hill. You know, to to be able to pipe the water up the steepest hill, uh, if we if we were, to, and that's something we'll look into if we ever have to, if we get to the point. I guess I need to look into it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we wouldn't it's install we it. We wouldn't install it unless we had to. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of being able to use rainwater, but you know, you don't always have rain, so yeah. that's um. But I believe that's our biggest problem is water watering the high tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe it's achievable and 
I would say that I'm thinking if, if we set a few of these things in motion and it really won't take that much to do that, I really think our gardening plan could be sustainable. Yeah. Well, here I, here I go on week number one saying you can't be sustainable and two weeks in a row we're thinking we can be sus pretty sustainable in, with mm -hmm. water and pretty sustainable with gardening. I think so. What else? Um, I believe that's all I have in my notes. So what are we missing, y'all? We're going to ask you that every week at the end of this video, if I remember. We're going to say, what are we missing? Uh, what are we not thinking about regarding gardening sustainability? Um, what issues do you think you would face that we don't have to consider? Um, things of that nature. Yeah. And I mean, we grow only the stuff that uh, we don't grow wheat. You know, um, I haven't grown enough field corn to keep to grind for my cornmeal. Um, uh, I did buy a lot of bell peppers last year. I'm not growing enough bell peppers. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention is my, uh, oh, I can't think of the word of for it. Um, not rotation gardening, um, succession planting to where when my, well, that's one thing that I would do differently if we had to live off of just what we got out of the garden. And I would like to try that. But anyway. Um, I wouldn't. I just, I ain't, I just ain't going to lie to you. I, 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 I wouldn't. practice. Okay. But anyway, um, you know, when I, when, when I have a squash plant that's done, I need another squash plant ready to go in or at least plant a seed there to grow another squash plant um, where there's an overlap of food coming in because squash will grow all summer. Mm -hmm. uh, Peas, we need to have plant peas. When those peas are done, pull them up, plant more peas. That's not something we do. Um, I start gardening around March uh, or April. Really around March, I put plants in the high tunnel. And so by the time June, July gets here, I'm tired of gardening. I'm ready for a break. But if we had to do that to just live... There's no getting tired of it. It's either eat, uh, plant or die, you know? You so know, that, that's something that we really should get in a, in a habit of, of always growing something. Mm -hmm. and, and we do always have something growing, but you understand what I'm saying, stuff that we're actually filling our table with. Yeah, and I think maybe we need to spend some time, and you may already have already done this. This is, you know, Patty's the brains of this operation. <laughs> Uh, but it just occurs to me, in fact, we chatted a little bit about this, but I can't remember what we said, really. Um, but there's a difference between gardening to live, to survive, and gardening to supplement. Gardening mm -hmm. to supplement your meals or gardening okay. as a hobby or whatever. Or just that you enjoy it. And I've all, I'll, it's always, Tommy said, he said something about uh, making it your goal to... Uh, to grow as much food as you as you as you're gonna need. That's always my goal. I just never accomplish it. But what I was getting you at know? is though, um, it's one thing to to grow to to stack the pantry full of snap beans. Mm -hmm. but can you survive off of snap beans? I guess my point is thinking about sustainability and survivability, which they may go. I guess they sort of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. If, if we ever got into a situation because of weather, natural disaster, war, whatever, where you had to grow your food and harvest animals, which is another thing, but if the, only, if, if the vegetables had to come from your garden and nowhere else, then it would affect your decisions on what to grow. You, one of the things I was telling oh, Patty, yeah, that's right, you know, that's like, right. like we, she loves to plant 150 tomato plants. Why? Because we're selling them at the farmer's market. Well, if oh, we... Oh, no, I planted 200 for the farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, if we were gardening to grow, we wouldn't waste the space that 200 tomato plants takes. That's right. We, we would grow... We might have 25 tomato plants or 50, whatever. Enough to just be eating on and to preserve some. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. I'm only doing two rows this year, just 100 plants. You know, we need to do some research, and maybe you already have, but we need to do some research on what vegetables could you live off of you know and 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 think about planting some more of those i mean i know our time's running out but corn 
you know, you mentioned wheat. I don't know. Would you need to have wheat? No, you uh, don't need to have wheat and wheat. That, that's a whole other story because of the process of, of uh, 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 to, to get it to the point that you can grind it. You know, it comes with, I can't think of that, the outer hull. I can't yeah. think of the name of it. But that's got to be removed, you know. So that's something you can tell us in the comments of this video. What, tell us what vegetables we need to live. What, what, what vegetables do you need to plant, do we need to plant, or would we need to plant if our garden was providing 100% of our vegetable mm -hmm. intake? And then also comment below and let us know what we missed in thinking about how do you make gardening sustainable. Uh, let us know also how you're doing. If you, if you are in a gardening situation, how sustainable are you? Or have you even thought about that? Have you thought about it? it? Uh, has this series made you start thinking about it? And anything else you, you'd want to uh, let us know in the comments, we'd appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe and come back and see us because we'll be here next Saturday and probably several days in between. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.